Yeah, yeah. Over there. that's in, I mean, we got close there. That was uh, yeah. I could I could hear the uh, riff police uh, coming from miles <laughs> around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. ah, welcome back to Anderson's TV, everybody. Um, this is bizarre. Why Digital John? Digital John. What do you know about the seventies? Nothing at all. <laughs> yeah, here I am. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, a few weeks back, uh, John was here and we did a video called what is it about 80s guitar tone i think mm -hmm. yeah and it was <laughs> substantially more popular than we thought it would be so um in true uh you know sort of glory hunting netflix fashion we've done series two um the 70s this what time? is it about the sound of the 70s yeah uh so how old were you in the 70s john i was minus 26 so depressing isn't yeah. it everybody <laughs> uh the 70s how would you sum up the sound of the 70s? What did it, where did it start and where did it end in this sort of epic journey of the electric guitar over the last 70 years? So, in my opinion, mm. as a 96 person, <laughs> it, it started off like um, simple power chord A based tracks. So like, you know, Thin Lizzy. Could I, only songs in A. Yeah, I power chords, yes. uh, you know, Sabbath, Zeppelin. <laughs> worked out Zeppelin. what the next chord was. <laughs> uh, who else? Yeah, Zeppelin, Thin Lizzy, uh, Sabbath, Free as well, early 70s. Then towards the end of the 70s, that's when guitar tones first got scooped. So like right. the mid-scoop Van Halen thing. And they're completely different. Like the 70s shift is quite drastic. So, but we'll go over that. I always today. feel like the, the sort of back end of the 60s and the beginning of the 70s, just all the good riffs just got discovered there are and a lot. used. Yeah, there are and a lot. And then all the later riffs had to be more complicated and not as good. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. okay. So what if, sort of what equipment have we gathered around us today to attempt <coughs> to do this some sort of journey through the 70s? Sure. You know, so if, if, if people watching are going, yeah, I, I, that's the sound that I want, what sort of stuff do you think they should get? So starting from guitars, really there was Strats, Les Pauls and SGs about as a general thing. So we've got this Fender. Strat, as you heard in the intro, Les Paul. Uh, no, Fury. Les Paul. Fender, yeah, Fender Les Paul. This is my 70s. <laughs> we knowledge. bring all the experts in yeah. for these videos. Uh, <laughs> we have a Les Paul, is what I was going to say. Uh, we're not Le going mad money, we're just going yeah. Epiphone. Laney um, Plexis and um, Laney Plexis. Fender JCM 800s yeah, exactly. and everything. We've got all the good stuff. Sorry, um, It's all right. Uh, so, Strats, Les Paul. We've got a Kramer there for the Van Halen stuff. We do have an actual Van Halen EVH over there. Um, and yes, an SG Tony Iommi SIG as well. So that should cover all the bases. Um, yeah, and then in terms of amps, uh, most of it, as I said, was Plexi. So we've got uh, Marshall, what is that based off? It's basically based off of Plexi. It's that not is a, a Plexi. Yeah, it is, it is the, probably our favorite new addition to this studio over the last few months is the Marshall SV20. So it's the studio vintage, so it's right. a 20 watt, shrunk down version, but still trying to capture the essence of uh, 1959 uh, 100-watt Marshall Super. Yeah. Um, and then Delaney over here, this is the LA, the new, this is the smaller studio version, isn't it? Um, has a like great low end, so for like the Sabbath Iron Man stuff, that should be great. Um, and then a Deluxe Reverb here, so Leonard Skinnerd, very Fendery. Was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, it's a very clean tone. Listen to the original, and I'm <laughs> through research. I'm pretty sure they use Fenders, um, and it was the what model was it? I think it was the Deluxe. Twins. Fender Twin. Yeah, that was it. it was the Twin. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how we see how close yeah. we can get, basically. Yeah. And then what have we got on the floor? Because I'm guessing 70s was still <clears throat> still relatively early days for yeah. the sort of the world of pedals, wasn't it? There wasn't a lot. Um, and there was just so much experimenting going on, like with Zeppelin, Black Dog, I'm pretty sure that was, um, Chris Book did a great video on it, uh, but I'm pretty sure it was Jimmy Page, L, like Les Paul, straight into uh, a compressor, another compressor, straight into a desk. It was like, Oh, cool. really? Yeah, and that's where the fuzz came from, from just like slamming two compressors in a series. Um, and then on the floor, in terms of pedals, uh, which they didn't have the luxury of back then really, but here we've got a classic 108 fuzz from MXR, um, to do the Sabbathy stuff, we've got a compressor here because um, it, it's fair to say that they still had you know compression, even if it is just like turning amps up until they didn't have a dynamic range. I think um, it's how they got it. So we've got a Dynacomp again, MXR. Uh, we have a Summer Orange here. Fazer. Yes. Um, so for the Van Halen stuff, 
I think that's about the only one of the yeah. tracks that you're going to play that's got uh, any kind of modulation on it, isn't it? Like Van Halen 1 has Ain't Talking About Love on it, so I was like, need a phaser. Uh, and then an Epoch boost here. So that's just another booster at the end for a bit more. Well, it, you say it, it's just another boost. I mean, for me, so many of those, um, the sounds of that period was the preamp of something that you wouldn't have kind of it wasn't yeah. there to sort of That's like it. wasn't a traditional distortion type circuit so it could have been the preamp from a wireless system like all the sort of angus young schaefer stuff was or ep boost that had loads of sorry the echoplex um the preamp section of the echoplex that mm -hmm. people use what was the one um oh, i can't remember who the guitar player was the other day but we were talking about a guy who had like a reel to reel machine and just but was just using the preamp section uh. of that again to drive into his uh, um valve amplifier but yes so we've gone with the catlin bread epoch boost which is one of several um pedals that uh copy that kind of uh, echoplex preamp circuit so mm -hmm. there isn't really a a distortion pedal on the floor the fuzz will be no. the, the closest to that so i've got a list here from um 90s john of his chosen sort of sounds of the 70s i must admit this could have had hundreds of alternative oh, yeah. there's no pink floyd here there's no acdc there's no there are some good bands on here in all fairness some uh yeah um but look i think we're just trying to cover the bases so yeah i mean this could be a very long video this so, could be so yeah. we started with smoke on the water which wasn't the earliest that was early 70s 72 i think wasn't yeah. it but we can go earlier uh and what we're going to start with here in fact great choice of guitar so you we're going to talk about now uh again one of one of i think guitar players with the best feel and tone of all of them all paul kossoff and we're going to play a bit of all right now with this is a simple sound this is just literally straight into the marshall with a les paul so this is our plexi. Uh, you probably can't see this on close up, but we've jumped uh, the two channels and we've got the gain levels probably not as high as they would have been for an actual free gig, yeah. but they're about halfway up. <laughs> I mean, it's a combo you know, of an LP and a Marshall just works, doesn't it? Yeah, you know what we are using, actually? Uh, this little Studio Vintage 20 amplifier is insanely loud, even though it's, you know, 20 watts and it has a low mode. So actually, with that little Bugera PS1 we're using as an attenuator on the top there, yeah. uh, which, you know, I think it's easy to poo-poo that because it's, it's a relatively affordable, you know, 99 quid attenuator, but it does a job. Um, and that's the only reason why we're not all dying of yeah. ear splitting blood coming out of our ears. Paul Kossoff, on the other hand, would have just stood in front of his mm. two 1959 Marshall stacks. And took it. I mean, that, that <laughs> single note solo, that single note solo in that song where it's just that unbelievable blend of, of, of guitar into amp feedback oh, there's yeah. you know there's there's that and i just think he's got such phenomenal vibrato i don't know if do you know the solo i don't uh, know if it, is it more neck, neck pick up pasty shit okay uh, what is it? I, think, I think it's pretty much bridge hole track <laughs> It's, I mean, it's the only thing missing there are Paul Kossoff's fingers, uh, which are, uh, yours are almost as good as, and like a hundred times louder. Yeah, true. It's, it's the sense of, anyway, I love that. Uh, it's a bit of a, 
you know, everybody that's ever been in a in a in a bad pub band has probably done a version <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of that song, and it gets a bad name, doesn't it? But yeah. it's a great it's song. A track, yeah. So there we are. That was no pedals, just nothing. Les Paul, what do you think? Uh, you can vote at the end as to which your favourite was. So after, well, at about the same time as that mm. song came out, um, Ozzy and Tony and friends. Back in Birmingham. Uh, yeah, back in Birmingham, were basically releasing Iron Man. Mm. Again, I think that's my favourite of all those sort of Sabbath songs. Uh, but of course, they would have been using a locally made guitar amplifier from up there in the Laney uh, LA100. Um, or some people say the Laney clip. You've written the Laney clip. Yeah. I didn't think they were. I thought it was. I was I thought doing it was some definitely... research. Yeah. Well, no one was really like, "This is what I used." But people were saying around that time it was the Laney clip. I'm pretty sure. And so, you think also with fuzz over the top of it. It's got a lot of sustain. So you know, I think that amp may be able to do enough. We'll see. Can you play left-handed though? I'll do my best. Okay, good. I am actually left-handed. Are you? But play right-handed. Isn't that so? Oh. You're so you you know you write left-handed. You do things left-handed. Yeah. Left-handed, the whole thing just plays guitar right. As we can't say that bit, can we? So that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, what rig have you selected to do Iron Man with, then, Mr. John? The brand new, at the time of recording this, at the end of September, Tony Iommi Signature Epiphone SG. Look at that. So not it's it's a different P90s, I guess, and and a, and a sort of wraparound tailpiece. It's not your traditional old uh, SG. This one is it. So but one it of those. Uh, with Avec, which pedal, Mr. John? So I've gone uh, into the Laney LA with the classic 108 fuzz. Let's just hear it without the fuzz, just so. in case we sort of decide. You, you'll see then why John wanted the fuzz over the top. So here we go, Iron Man. So perfectly but, good. Yeah, but it's it's just missing that chaotic kind yeah. of madness that and the fuzz is going to add in over the top. Well, it needs, so. uh, yet again in here, what we really don't have is 10,000 watts, basically, yeah. which is it's so weird that that era of sound, I think so much of what you're hearing is, is volume. <laughs> mad volume. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, here we go here with we go. fuzz. <laughs> Think of all it's the thick. hundreds of thousands of parents there <laughs> telling their children off for listening to Black Sabbath records and accusing them of playing them backwards and <laughs> worshipping the devil. And now you just think it was just, you know, you listen to it now and you think, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, good, good rock riffs. song, right? Um, okay. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, is there any other kind of um, Sabbathy? I mean, you're obviously paranoid, I suppose. You could. Say. <laughs> Does it? Where, and when he was soloing and stuff, is there what's the sort of a classic sort of Tony uh, Iommi? It's very similar to the rhythm, I think. Oh, yeah. It's a really, I mean, it's much fuzzier, chewier, darker sound yeah, thicker, than the Marshall, yeah. isn't it? Um, right. There we are. I, I think Zeppelin now, next. Uh, comment below. What do you think is going to be next? Are you just giving it away? It Sars. is Zeppelin next. That's all right. We'll do. We'll guess after the next one. So, 1971, just uh, 23 years before I was born, uh, became. Uh, were these? This, were they, is this the biggest rock band in the world ever? Pool. Led Zeppelin. I mean, Queen technically. In, what, in on, terms on of what streams. Basis? streams, is it really? Yeah. Streams. They have like the most. <laughs> Tracks with a billion streams. Apparently. Really? Yeah. I did not. Not. Uh, oh. They also had a film that was pretty big. Do you know? So uh, this is true. Oh yes. If yes. Zeppelin had a film, it would go off. I reckon. There was a Zeppelin film. Was there? The, um, not yes. like the no, Queen one. No, uh, but the whole mega famous uh, song remains the same. Was the Zeppelin film? I haven't seen it. 
bad. Does that to be I'm fair, sorry? if I have seen it, it was a long time ago. Let's do but, another one. Um, yeah, it'd be yeah, tricky, tricky though, wouldn't it? Either. Now, um, you haven't seen Goonies or Crossroads. This Where's is true. LP? I haven't seen Goonies or Crossroads or anything. Now, here's the big dilemma, though. Did Jimmy play this, or did he play his white Telecaster? I know See? that early Zep is with the white telly, but from the resources, I swear people say Les Paul. I often. think that I think people used to see him play the, Le the the Les Paul live a lot, and so assumed that was what was on the recordings. And I think the recordings. I mean, we've were got a telly there. Little, yeah. Well, in uh, fairness, uh, it's not it's not well, that type of telly. We've got it's just a, a normal, a very nice fender over there as well. Yeah, it would just be just a, a plain. You know, telly, but yes, I mean, and, and little Supro amplifiers as well. So right, I, think yeah, the yeah. I think the recording setup was very different to the live setup. But hey, this is going to spark we're going, so much. Yes, so guns. much debate, so, so much. much debate. So um, <laughs> we are going back to the Marshall. Yep. Oosh. And uh, and now with compression, right, in the front end, we think that's what we want, yeah. do we? So the original has quite a fuzzy thing to it. It's not like a, a usual Marshall sound you'd associate with Zeppelin. So we can try the Marshall, but I reckon Laney with low gain might actually get closest. And another thing with this, if you play it right by the bridge and you get that sort of, I'm gonna call it parpy, with less gain, I reckon we'll, we'll see. You tell me what you want so and I'll, I'm gonna, I'll set it up. I'm gonna try this. Oh, he's going fuzz. Dialed way back. Can we try the, the, uh, the Laney? The Laney? Yeah, with... Ooh, controversial. Yeah. Oh. He's going for it. What do you Ooh. want to do? <laughs> more, more treble. More. There's, there isn't much more. I mean, or like less bass. Less bass. Yeah, we can uh, do that. And then with this, if we bring it in a bit, he's doing it. Up. I think it's more like that than a Marshall. Do you? Physio. I All mean, right, we're going to do it. it. We're going to try it with a Marshall, but uh, with yeah. without any pedals. <laughs> That is a sound you associate with Jimmy Page, but... It's a bit spiky. Let's try it with this. I'm, I'm looking for the Telecaster. Where's the, where's the uh, purple weapon of choice? Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear it. Trust me, it's so weird. It's. I can't even do it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's double tracked. It's double tracked. Where's the deco? I mean, we're, we're going deep here, aren't we now? But here hey, we go. I kind of feel like we're on a journey, same as you guys. Okay, we've put a Dryman deco on the floor, which uh, I must admit, possibly the most underrated of all the Strymon <laughs> pedals. But this is going to add um, the overdrive side of it from basically like overdriving the preamp of a tape machine yeah plus the double tracking element of it uh so i've turned all the other pedals off we're back in the marshall give us a big fat a chord with nothing now with the deco both sides on now let's play it on that and then on this and we'll decide who boost in let's try a bit more that's no, too much that, that, that's oh, you like that? okay, go on, the original right. it doesn't sound great but it's closer to the original i'm standing by it try but the uh lay paul lay paul let's pull i think again it just needs more volume it's not loud enough here we go with the deco. Oh, I, okay, you vote. I thought the Les Paul was closer. Which did you think? I like the telly. Okay, there we are. Pete obviously liked the telly. Uh, <laughs> So there we are, Jimmy Page. Yep. Awesome, awesome guitar player. Who have we missed? Who have we looked? We're in 1971. 
What other classic songs would have come uh, out at that next time? Next could be... Are you guessing? Ah, you'll never get the next one. Well, you might do. Uh, who... I don't even know who the guitar player was in this band at the time, but we're next. We're going Schools Out, Alice Cooper. Cool. 1972. Definitely Les Paul or SG, that one. Uh, who was the guitar player then? <laughs> Is that, have we done it? Are we in? Was that it? That simple. I think. Yeah. Okay, well, the, um, they had two guitar players in that band, Glenn Buxton and Michael Bruce. Michael Bruce played rhythm and keyboards and Glenn Buxton was lead guitar. So I'm guessing Glenn would have taken the, the, yeah, the intro the riffs. riffs for everything. So let's just talk us through that. So we're still in the yep. Marshall. We haven't changed any of the settings. So we're sort of, you know, driving it reasonably sort of hard. Mm -hmm. Bridge pickup. Les Paul, yeah. No uh, pedals. No pedals. Yeah, no, nothing at all. Let's see what, what, let's, what would have happened had he decided to use a boost. Both think, are good. But... I think it's without. Yeah. Without, you get more note clarity, I think. Yeah. And there's that sense of, you know, half this stuff is is not as overdriven as people think yeah, it is. Yeah, it sounds like all the riffs are struggling a bit, but in a good way in the 70s. Like, then just, they need a bit more gain because they're playing hard or something. It's good. Were you a big Alice Cooper fan? Did, uh, what, what did he... Yeah, Poison is one of my favourite, like, ever songs, I reckon. Yeah. Do you like his sort of, um, it's this, I think he's, you know, he's written some great tunes, but he's, he's probably most well known for his stage shows. Yeah, I've like never seen of, him live, no, but it would be cool. Not in the flesh, no. Yeah. Okay, so, um, your, we now jump to 1974. Anyone want to guess what absolute banger John has picked from the 74? Everybody's favorite uh, oh, southern rocker American band, uh, Leonard Skinner. Leonard so this Skinner. is uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Now, I must admit, visions for me of those guys are, are very Gibson, you know, Firebird, I kind of Listen think. Listen to that but, intro, it is 100% But, but you're saying this is a twin reverb and a strat. You get that over Les Paul and I will well, if it's an underwhelmed it could, yeah, I do. I look, that, it sounds saying? so spindly oh, in position two. So comp for this because it's compressed as anything. Boom. Boom. We on the fender yet? We are. All the tones up. I think position two, we can try a few. So that's going to be a bit bright, but. about the aeroplane crash that killed like yeah half killed most the band. of them didn't it yeah wow dangerous stuff flying yeah look there's a picture of Leonard Skinner admittedly from much more recently uh, and they've got an explorer a firebird and a Les Paul in the in the band but that in fairness was much more recently so maybe it was a strat um, but it's got that sound it's got so a spindly thing let me try it what would it have sounded like had they played it through a Marshall See, I don't think I don't think Marshall's the right Marshall in the right setting with the right guitar is like this death defying metal type thing. You know, I think yeah. it's not metal, but you know what I mean? I think you can get some great clean sounds. Yeah. From that. Do you want to try a but, bridge? So. Yeah. And then we're going Marshall again. What pick up are you saying, Pete? Well, I'm saying that nobody would care that party you're playing at. The yeah, absolutely. Years, this is, party, this is what we've played yeah, yeah. <laughs> just after All Right Now and just before Mustang Sally, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. This is just a wedding uh, set. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Okay. So I like it. I yeah. like, it's a great band. Um, and again, it's all very much that that first rig was just a compressor with it with yeah. a fender amplifier. Okay, now this one surprised me because I'm guessing that 
Most people will not have heard this song when it very first came out. Most people will be substantially more familiar what song? Uh, with the Run DMC oh, what's uh, that? Yeah. Uh, sort of remix collaboration of it. But yes, uh, Aerosmith, it's funny, it's my wife's favourite band of all well, time. So she's, she's a massive Aerosmith fan. And is it songs from the, what was the early stuff? Songs from the cradle can't remember oh. show, i get shot for getting all this wrong but yeah it, i was really surprised how far back um they go and their early stuff sounds nothing like that kind of heavily produced 80s kind of stuff that they're maybe no. more famous for yeah like dream on was pretty early wasn't it and that yes. was very dry and, uh, and it is it's very i would think again it sounds very just bare bones old marshall and yeah. I think that's a fabulous... And again, in that band as well, I think Brad Whitford is so, so underrated. It's like... Um, uh-huh. Joey gets all the kind of... Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the sort of the, 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 the glamour. Him, him and Steven Tyler are kind of, you know, the toxic twins thing. But I think, honestly, Brad Whitford, just a monstrous guitar player. I don't know who came up with that riff out of the two of them, either. Um, yeah. But uh, what do you want? Les Paul? Les Paul, please. Oof. Let's see how close we get to this. Marshall. In the Marshall. So let's turn everything off here and see how close we get. And the next bit's really difficult. <laughs> Something like that, isn't it? Ah, yeah. it's good! <laughs> yeah. It's just Mate. Les Paul into a Marshall. It works. Maybe a bit more gain on it? Can Do you, you think? Like, oh, I mean, we no, could... No, I don't no. think it is. I was going to say, if anything, it might even be less. Just a bit more, like, fizz well, or we something. Can put, we can put can we the, the, the boost on here. Yeah, not like saturation, but like fizz or something. I mean, it might be different on the mic, but... Yeah, that's it. I think you're even playing it in the chopped up Run DMC style. I totally am. I think it, it's, that, like, it's, uh, it's uh, more, uh, uh, it's looser. Yeah, the original's like... In the Aerosmith version. Such a great riff though. Yes. Yeah. Such a great riff. It's good. Good easy. job. Good job. And easy, yeah. I t- again, Marshall amplifier, attenuator so that you don't kill yourself or kill your neighbours. Um, it's great, man. All yeah. right, let's Aerosmith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who's my favourite band on this list here? Oh, that's next to impossible. Anyway, that was 1975. Halfway there. Crazy. Halfway there. It's a Bon Jovi lyric, isn't it? Oh, halfway yeah. there. Well, that, was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was more 80s. Um, Talking on Sorry. I can't remember. Didn't didn't John Bon Jovi have a Christmas album out in like 1979 or something <laughs> no before idea. before Bon Jovi? Um, right, we've got uh, two songs for 1976. So I guess I don't know which one came out first. Um, I'm gonna just gonna go in with again a bit of a. Uh, is it fair to say this was a bit one hit wonder this band? But it's an yeah. absolute great track. banger. Yeah. So we're going in now. 1976, a Blue Oyster Cult with Don't Fear the Reaper. I think that's a strat as well. Is it? I think it's a strat bridge pickup. People are going to go well, at Well, you me go for, that, for it. Pick a strat up and, and do it. Oh, are we in the Fender? The no. I apologize. Uh, yeah. you, you didn't ask for a Fender. Sorry, I think Fender. You think Fender, yeah. do you? I, it's pretty clean. There's a tiny bit of... Um, fizz on it when it's pushed. Okay. So it might be a Marshall driven low or something, but anyway. Where's my Farrell on Ian? It's great. Oh yeah, of course, 100%. I need a cowbell. Um, oh man. Where else does that song go? Because I can't, uh, I'm trying to even think now, where does it go next? Yeah, oh, it goes off on one. It really it, goes off on one. It's a long one. song, isn't it, from yeah. memory, that one? That's the bit that matters. I don't know anything else. I'll yeah, just, yeah. I'll line up to what, it. What, uh, okay, I want to hear that again. Like, what if it was into a Marshall? Like, no, it's, turn it's, the game way down or something. Wait, yeah, you're right. Nah, it's no, 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 pushed. it's fine. It's not, it's yeah. not, it, it may well have been a very clean Marshall, but it certainly sounded, yeah. we, we've got, uh, cowbell Pete in the background <laughs> just finding anything that sounds like a cowbell 
Anyway, uh, do you want to do that again just so Pete can play it? One, two, three. Uh. <laughs> Was it Saturday Night Live that that thing with Will Ferrell yeah. was on or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Such a remember, genius, yeah. genius clip. Uh, right, uh, so <laughs> in the same year, but using distinctly different gear, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. and again, another band that had one or two epic guitar players in it, but I think at this particular time, it was not the one that I'm thinking of. Uh, anyway, so we're now Boys Are Back In Town by Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Who was what the guitar band? player? Scott, oh, was it Scott Gorham in 76? Don't do that to me. Because uh, it certainly, it wasn't Gary Moore yet, was it? I don't think. Not, um, not at that time, no. But nonetheless, it still would have been very, I'm sure, L Les Pauly and Marshally, yeah. 100%. So we need to be in the Marshally uh, with the Les Paul. Uh, John has dropped tuned it to E flat. E minus 16 um, cents flat. We, yeah, we don't like know that. whether or not that is uh, a legit thing to have done for this song. It's relatively easy to it's find out. It's definitely not standard. Just... It's not 440. Really not? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see. Do we need... Um, do we need any pedals or are we just, let's hear what it sounds like without. Okay. Ah, oh, I kind of feel like now that I've got the deco at my feet, I want, and, and especially as that is one of those kind of classic two guitar player bands, yeah. I want to see what happens if I put the double tracker on here. <laughs> Oh, it's sound good. It's a great. I mean, wicked track, wicked. The world needs more Les Pauls into old Marshall amplifiers. Yeah, bring it back. Forget all this like high gain, you know, super saturated. Yeah. Mega Bogner diesel, you know, thing. Just not. The, there's, a, there's a time and a place for that. I get yeah. it. But there's a lot to be oh, said for just. Proper yeah, just, and loud. <laughs> proper amps, proper cabs, really loud. Um, there's only one more to go, Johnny boy, I think. Uh, and that. Van Halen. You left the easy one till last, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. So now, 1978. Um, all of a sudden, you know, I think the world starts to see its next kind of guitar Jedi yeah. appear uh, as Eddie Van Halen starts going, yeah, you know, you lot were all good, but check this out. Here I am, uh, yeah. So what do you want to play? I mean, I, I kind of feel we should go with the yellow yeah, let's Kramer. Because as much as the stripy one is like... The custard Kramer. You know, su super recognisably Van Halen, I sort of feel like if we just go super old school. Now... We have a phaser. We may use the phaser here. We certainly know he was running the jahibas out of his Marshall amplifiers and using things like, um, you know, messing with the voltage and all that kind of stuff to try and get the tubes to run even hotter. But we'll see. This is our final attempt as our journey through the 70s uh, comes to an end. But we're going to try and do, I say we, I can't claim any credit for this. Um, Classic brown sound with I'm the one. Yeah. Um, that doesn't have a phaser on it, but talking about lots of things. Does it not? Okay, yeah. we'll, so we'll do we'll, both then. Fatal mistake here, and just put too much gain on this sound. It's got loads. It's got loads on it. Listen has to it. Has it? It has got tons. Even I... for seventies. Trust me. Okay, so it tons of gain that came out of nowhere at seventy-eight. <laughs> It's not. Um, Needs more. He somehow. Fizz. He somehow gets that 
there's that sense that the Marshall's about to explode yep. sound. And, and, and a way more top-end fizz than any of those earlier 70s kind of Marshall sounds had. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. Um, I don't know that we'll do this. I also kind of think as well the fact that he's in E-flat is yeah. a fatter sound. Yeah. But look, we've put some pedals on the floor here. We've, we've added an, a Tube Screamer clone, the, the Origin FX Halcyon. This particular uh, Tube Screamer clone that we've done has uh, the ability to, to, to blend in quite a bit of the dry signal, which uh, our resident Danish tone expert, Eddie Van Halen, uh, <laughs> super fan, um, <laughs> suggested it might help. Anyway, John, why don't you play and I'll just tap them on as we go along. <laughs> funny isn't it I, I i mean i think eddie's tone is fairly well documented if you need if you know where to go and look but yeah. also shrouded in mystery if you're the brown if you, if you don't but that brown sound yeah. is just it's just fat and fizzy and heavy and do you know what's called the brown sound no i don't actually. apparently because brown is a warm color and so is the brown sound apparently that's why it is do you know, I bet you there's probably a thousand variants yeah. of that conversation as well. Could you play <laughs> the phase of I'm thinking about love or something <clears> just to sort of like, uh, just to sort of play, just to give us an excuse to play this pedal that we've not switched on for the entire yeah. time we've been here. Here we go. Same um, sort of sound as you had before, but just with phase. Do it, ain't With a lot of background noise as well. Yeah. Well, there you are. It's uh, it's it's 1980 now, so we've got yeah. to move on. Uh, if you didn't watch the uh, 80s tone video, it's up in the top corner there. Uh, would you like us to do another one of these? And if so, do you want us to go, you know, more to the sort of the decade where I was born, and uh, you know, know a bit more about it in the 90s, or or, or back, uh, you know, to where John's Six. grandfather was from in the <laughs> 1960s? Um, <laughs> So yes, uh, let us know. Should we go backwards or forwards? Or neither. It's mm. entirely up to you. Yep. Um, Mr. John Connor, it's been a pleasure spending the day Thank with you, you again. Sir. Thank Likewise. you so much for coming down. Thank you for tuning in as well. And we shall see you in another episode soon. See you in a bit. Au revoir.